Okay, hello everyone again. Hello again. <laughs> um, so Jaden, I was asking the other, the other participants if they um, have been seeing the messages in WhatsApp. Have you been seeing them? Um, no, I think I have to turn on my, um, my notifications for that one. Cause sure. it's, it's, yeah, so I'll, yeah, I'll go there right now. Hold on. Yeah. WhatsApp has taken me some time to get used to. It's not a, not a platform that I was using before this. I mean, I've known of it forever. I've used it a couple of times, but it's, um, Okay, nowadays we have to use various platform at one platforms at once. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and there's something about it that it's it's not quite as intuitive as maybe some of the other stuff I'm using, but it's fine. It's great. So, all right, Jaden, and then in WhatsApp, um, we sent you a link to a survey. It really only takes a couple of minutes um, to fill out, and if you're sitting at the computer while you're watching this, you can probably just go ahead and fill it out it's it's really short so but we need a little feedback from from all of you and we hope to get you uh hope to get people working in small teams um so that would be the next the next step for everyone is to think about making sure that you're checking whatsapp and that you've got your notifications turned on and that you are reaching out to the um, the person or people that you are paired with. Uh, it really, you know, we're not looking for you to, well, we want you to have fun doing it. So we're not looking to tax your time a lot. Um, what we want is for you to pick a place with, with your partner. You can pick one or two places um, and just start thinking about once you've picked it, just each of you getting a couple of photographs of satellites like that's the point we're trying to get to is where you've maybe identified a place on google earth or google maps or google earth pro you've you've now gone through and shown us that you can um draw a boundary and export a kml file and look at it in um Sentinel Hub, and when you're in Sentinel Hub, like I, I'll admit, Sentinel Hub is a little confusing for me sometimes because there are so many satellites to choose from, and I don't really understand what what each of them is offering, um, and that's something that Dimitri is so, such an expert at that you know he he wants us to learn that eventually too. Um, but it, a little bit of that goes past me, I'll admit it. Uh, but I do understand now, I think if you stick to Sentinel-2 or something like that, like the big thing is that we're looking first to get you to understand how to access the photographs taken, the images taken by the satellites themselves. Whether you understand everything that that satellite is offering or not is not the, the main thing. We just want you to know how to start accessing that data and putting it together so we can so we can get an area of study that we actually start to study so um so what i want to do today is i really want since we have such a small group um i think the biggest next step for us is to get all of you communicating with each other as much as you can so i'd like to uh go around the around the group and i'll start with daniel since you're up in the top corner for me i'm i'm not only doing this in order of how you show up on the screen so um but and and just ask how things are going and if there's anything we can help with and if you are you know feeling comfortable with that first assignment that's kind of what i'm looking for here today we had hoped we had hoped that you had already connected and that there was a project you could show us, but if we can at least talk about, about the next steps, that would be helpful for us. So Daniel, we'll ask that you turn on your mic and we'll we'll talk for a few minutes about this, okay? 
I thought uh, I thought that we need to do the project after our today lesson. No. Of course, yeah, we, we could start. Of course, it, it is good if you have already started, but if you'll start after the lesson, also okay. You could just tell us now about your ideas and. So Daniel, who, who are you paired with? Um, my team is me and Darius Istronova and uh, Ismail. Okay, so all three of your team are here right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Hi, babe. So are you waving to me or have you have your problem uh, in communicating with each other? Mm, we didn't can communicate, but I think we have no problems. Okay. We can That's write it. each other in, uh, in emails. Yes. Sam, uh, you have your microphone turned off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what much better with the microphone on. Um, my five year old is saying goodbye. She's going to a birthday party, so she's very excited today. Um, Ismail and uh, Daria, can you turn on your cameras for a moment? What did you ask me? Uh, Ismail and, and Daria, if you could turn on your cameras. For a moment, I just want Daniel, Daniel, Ismail, and Daria, since you are all in one group together, um, to maybe see each other's faces and say, "Okay, you know, we can." You're not gonna, you're not going to have a lot of communication. We understand that, but we do want you to form that group. Hi, Ismail. Hi. And and um, hi, Daria. Great. Hi. Thank you. Nice to see <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Um, it would be nice. So you three are in a group together. So we want you to, um, via WhatsApp, we want you to communicate with each other and find a time that works that maybe you can sit even just for a short period of time. Uh, I don't know if you want to use Zoom or Google Meet or you guys are used to this. You're all you've all done distance learning and stuff. Um, you can sort it out, but it would be nice if you could get together as your group. And the idea is to have you pick an area that you want to do a little bit of a study. We're, it's not your main study. We're just trying to get you to get one spot. And then we want each of you to find two photos. Um, of satellites from that spot and put them into a shared folder and that'll just get the building blocks for the next for the next steps okay do, do you already have ideas about the area to study yeah i was thinking like singapore or something i have two ideas for example um, melting glaciers or urban expansion Interesting. Mm. And Ismail, what do you what about Singapore? In, uh... Um, I was just have I was just hearing they were having some like climate problems and some like population issues. And I thought it'd be cool to like track what's going on there, like that little region, like Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, like that little region. It's like the most populated place on Earth. So I thought that would be interesting. Yeah. So so that would be uh, no glaciers, but that would go with urban expansion, right? You could show you could show land use in in that part of the world. What do you think, Daria? Um, I don't know. I don't have an interesting idea right now. It's okay. Um, would you? But but you'd be okay with with maybe looking at um, glaciers or urban expansion and maybe Malaysia, like those are fine to start. Good. So I, that's, that's, uh, I would probably um, should notify two 
two points concerning if uh, concerning urban expansion, for example, if you are talking about Singapore, uh, there's not so much actually place to expand where, as you know, where Singapore is located on island practically. And uh, the way they are going to expand and they're trying to expand, they uh, usually uh, just uh, put more sense and expand the terrestrial area of the island, as far as I know, is what we're doing. And this is what could be watched with the satellite imagery. Hardly they have a very big expansion over the last 20 or 30 years, but probably, probably we'll find some. Right. Yeah, they, they expand up more than they do out, right? Because they don't have yeah, anywhere so, to go out. Yes, uh, they expand up on the one hand, but also what I know, uh, it is, you, you could probably check, but we're expanding the terrestrial area of the island we're located. So we are just uh, making artificial islands and our artificial expansion. Yeah, do you know what that, sea. you know what he's talking about, Ismail? uh like you're saying like make like, like i heard they're making like new islands and stuff and then there's gonna be like water issues like global water issues about that like i heard about it Not yeah that's uh if you don't mind i could i could share the screen my screen for example to show you this singapore area this is uh that uh global forest change portal by the university of maryland i probably mentioned it in one of our first lecture my first lecture lectures previously uh, but if you could see it in satellite images it is quite quite visible that the singapore is is located on islands and they have practically no place to ex expand basically and i believe i i could only very quickly quickly check this uh imagery of two, the year 2000 and the imagery of 2020. I'm not certain we will find something quickly, but if you if you could look carefully, but maybe you will see some changes. Mm. Yeah, and right I there off know. of that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, did you see that? There's there's a big uh, right about where your pointer was there. Yep. That the the kind of L shaped pink thing now now do your map again and it'll show that there's a big expansion this yes it is um so it is it is difficult to say but to, if you will uh look carefully around let me change to 2020 yeah maybe you will find something at least here you could see also some some changes at least that it is an airport i, I believe something like that but uh it was no no airport actually here if you could if you will be able to look this sentinel hub you will find earlier images earlier than the year 2000 it means you you have to use landsat images because sentinel images sentinel was only launched in uh, 2015 uh so it seems like in the year 2000 with all this area was like a uh just starting construction so under construction area so you do not see any airport right here in the year 2000 but in the year 2020 you could already see that there is an airport here also i believe in uh in uh google Earth pro you could find some some expansion very very possibly but the whole airport was has been constructed was constructed right right on the sea previously sea sea area but right we have to so, check i cannot right. say you for sure but so they would so so that somewhere off further up in the countryside they're they're taking uh soil and sand and dirt and they're bringing it down and, and filling in the sea and making new land right quite quite possible that the pipe sent with water right from the bottom of the sea to build up new terrestrial area somehow expand the island hmm. 
That's another, another issue you could see, but hardly we will see much more construction here in the island. This built, built up area, which is magenta here, you probably you could compare also images of the year 2020, 2000, and even some earlier era. Maybe you could see that some previously countryside maybe have been built up, but, but I do not really know about Singapore, how quickly it is expanding, but you could see also this um, uh, neighboring areas in Malaysia. I believe they also were expanding because of Singapore is such a big center in Asia, logistical center and trade center, industrial center, that's quite possible, but the area not, in, in the areas around the urban expansion also was going on. And also, yeah. if, if you're talking about Asia, I believe, uh, let me zoom a little bit out. I believe also uh, like uh, big cities in Indonesia could also, for example, in Jakarta, here in, in Java Island. Here is Jakarta. And I believe if you could compare, I also believe we could see some some uh, urban areas expansion. Maybe not not so much. Yeah, even here it is visible. If you could For look sure. carefully, yeah. But if you will look carefully, you will see even more. Something like this is 2000, 2000 and this is 2020. Look. And so what does the pink rep represent? Pink, this pink or magenta, which is mainly built up areas. So you could, for example, you could switch completely this low resolution imagery on and you will see this built up. And okay, this, so this, yes, this uh, some park, park islands, they, they will be seen maybe in green. So there was a lot of expansion in that area. Yeah. In years. So of course you could see uh, it is only just quick, quick check with low resolution imagery. But this with Google Earth Pro, you could see much more, much more details. I think. But with Landsat images, you could go more deeper, deeper in in the past and how in time. Because yeah. you see, it is it is like very low resolution imagery. You could only see some green island. But if you could take take a look on twenty years ago, there's much much larger areas in green here. So pro probably they, they were no constructed twenty years ago, no built up. Yeah, that's actually kind of amazing um, to so, see that much yeah. expansion in twenty years. Yeah. So so I I if if you are looking for Asian cities, I think that Jakarta and Singapore could be some. Some impressive examples. Maybe you could take a look for other Indonesian cities and Malaysian, Kuala Lumpur, for example, the, the capital of Malaysia. Also yeah. should should be should be a big expansion. So, but you, when we are talking about the glacier melting, that, that's another issue. Let me stop sharing for now. But that's another issue here is important that um, uh, glaciers, they are, uh, they, they are changing its size also during every season virtually. So in the summer, they are melting down and in the winter, they are uh, growing again. And so it is very important if you are studying uh, the glaciers to compare the same seasons and to, to separate the seasonal dynamic and the multi-year dynamic, decades dynamic somehow. So yeah. that's what, but bo both are interesting, but for, for glaciers, just try, try to choose the, the most, the biggest and the most interesting area. So usually glaciers are not so big in satellite images. If you are not talking about like Greenland or Antarctic, but most of them are not, not really big. I think near Canada, there are a lot of glaciers, maybe. In Rocky Mountains, yeah, but 
Yes, maybe you miss the Arctic glaciers in the. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, you know, Alaska has some good glaciers yet. But. Yeah. Also, also you could see some melting. I, I believe you could try. But it is not not as simple because what uh, probably we, we have to uh, maybe the next weekend or next week uh, maybe you could have a lecture of another uh, for for seasonal dynamic it is and for glaciers and some is large scale changes another another web portal I would would like you to maybe to get familiar with is. Uh, world view by NASA. Here it is. Maybe, maybe I could give you some introduction next time, but where you could see also some uh, everyday changes with very low resolution images. But you could see some changes. So, uh, Mikhail, do you know who your uh, par who you were partnered with? No, our team is me and Sonora, but I have some communication problems with Sonora. I sent her an email, but have not received a response yet. Okay. Um, yeah, Sonora has made it to several things. I, I, you know, I'll reach out to Analia. Um, we'll see if if Sonora is available but do you, do you have any specific things that you might like to look at she may be busy but i'll try to contact her again uh, i hope uh, we can uh, work together yeah yes. sam also sam also will contact from his side i think but also the question is if you now have michael uh, any idea about uh, yes i have idea do. Uh, I have prepared my ideas, but I'll glad to discuss them with Sonora. My idea is uh, Kilimanjaro Vulcan. It is the highest volcano in Africa. I think it's uh, very good for our project because uh, the cover of this uh, volcano was reduced by 85% ice cover. And uh, I'm interested in uh, knowing uh, which period of time were the worst for this volcano. And also I have an uh, idea to look at Madagascar Island. It is the fourth largest island in the world. Before the arrival of people, there were 300,000 square kilometers with covered jungle. But now there are only 50,000. And uh, I think I can uh, outline the reason of these uh, changes. And uh, the last idea is Uyuni Salt Flat. It's a very beautiful place in Bolivia. This, uh, Which one in Bolivia? Uyuni Salt Flat. Ah, oh, Uyuni. Uni salt flat. <laughs> it, uh, some people call this uh, uh, flat the largest mirror in the world because uh, in the rain, while uh, rainy season, this lake perfectly reflect light and uh, allow to get wonderful photos. Oh, I'm looking it up. Very cool. Okay, maybe maybe I could just by the way show show you this. Kilimanjaro vulcan. I just found it also. This, this is. Uh, do you see it? Yes. Yep. So this is the coverage in in the year 2000 and in the year 2020. It is much much smaller area of ice, but be careful because it could vary from from one season to another. So as I, as I told you that. Uh, it's, it's very important to see also seasonal dynamic, like day by day or month by month, how, how it's going to change. So it is, it is not, not so simple. Uh, 
as also from, from Madagascar, just keep in mind that people arrived to Madagascar like a tens of thousand years ago, actually, pretty, pretty much uh, centuries ago, I would say. So uh, the satellite images, of course, you could see only recent changes, like for last 40, 50 years, but uh, where, where impressive uh, the changes you will see even even in five or ten years you will see you could find changes in the tree color uh, yeah well. Mad madagascar has got uh, issues with monoculture too right where they where they plant palm uh, not really not really no. they, they do not have any single culture and i would say I would say it is multicultural and not so much actually planting palms, but rice, uh, many different things, a few different types of grain, uh, also some, well, some coconuts, but not, not really much, but also in kaffe and cassava and many, many different things. Okay. So there is not really monocultural, but it is very much like slash and burn agriculture. You know, that what I see you so so you were the most impressive changes. I'm not not certain even, but maybe maybe here, for example. Uh, look, this is the current current tree cover. Here in green, you see the forest. Uh, in this particular case, it is dry, a tropical forest. And if you could, could take a look for 20 years ago, you will see much, much larger green area. Yeah. And so, so here it is a real deforestation. So they not, not just cut trees and they grow again, but they usually cut trees, plant something. Uh, and practically these, tr these trees could come forever. So it is a, a impressive and very, very well visible in satellite images process. So you could, you could year by year, you could see this, uh, this pink or magenta or, or brown or uh, uh, other type of this reddish and red spots. It is just mainly clearing and quite often just slash and burn process yeah. like an agriculture when you slash it and burn it and then plant plant something yeah and and in those cases the the topsoil isn't uh isn't usually sufficient to support crops for very long correct not for very long the problem yeah. is that we usually usually the soil could support the crops for something like maybe five years and when you have to drop it and lock the next spot that next plot mm -hmm. and that's that, that's basically the problem but the population is growing and to uh, have continuous agriculture you need invest much more money rather than these poor people have they have basically nothing to to invest but here you see uh, could, could you see these straight lines here it is yeah. just the boundaries of a protected area. This is, this is the reason why the forest is still preserved here. And this pink and reddish and magenta colors, all of this is mainly bare soil. Of course, they, they are green in, in wet season as, as people just plant some crops, but in the, in the dry season, they are just this, uh, brown and pink and magenta and red colors. Yeah, there's, all, yeah, there's also, also another place Mikhail mentioned it. It is in South America. It is a, I'm not certain everybody, everybody of you understand, understood what Mikhail was talking about. It is just, uh, I believe, uh, are you knee? That's a, or maybe, of the right pronunciation of his Spanish name. This is a uh, dry salted lake, practically, and drainage for dry. Here it is. It is it is white here, or blue blue and white. 
because it is salt. It is practically no water. It is salt surface. And it's uh, maybe one of the biggest such a place in, in the world. It is famous because it is, um, it is sometimes it is really white. So it means it, it reflects uh, all sunlight from it. And it is really, I, I also have heard it, but it was, it was used for calibrating the, the satellite sensors. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. As, a, a, as a mirror, as a natural, big natural mirror. Yeah, I have to adjust the white balance on my camera every now and again. So this is this is from space. This is one of the most white things on the planet. Is that what you're saying? I I understand so yes. And yeah, that's you funny. see where where it's also some uh, some mining salt here, just uh, extracting salt for for industrial purposes. But basically, basically, it is just a huge salted huge salted area. So it is, it is up up there in the mountains and in a very dry area actually. It's just if I am not if I am not mistaken, this Atacama and this Surge called this area. In, it is Bolivia, Bolivia, Peru, and what's what's it? Yeah, Bolivia. It is it is practically completely in Bolivia. That's that's famous place also. If you could Google, Google it a little bit, you'll find. But yeah, Uyuni, I believe it's, it, that's the Spanish name. Like like here, the name of a of a town here. Yeah. Interesting. All right, Jaden, um, who are you partnered with? Let's, let's go around. I'm not Jayden. sure who I'm partnered with. Actually, okay. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Yes, according according to your to your list, Sam, this month. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Mark's not showing up, so I, <clears throat> not to this one anyway, right? You could try to contact him. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll try and work that out. If if not, maybe Mikhail and Jaden can pair up for for now. Um, okay. Should I just, should we just like wait until we hear back from Mark? Okay. Yeah, it, we'll try the, that early this week. And if we don't hear back from Mark, then we'll just partner you with someone who is actually attending, you know, who we, we can contact, so. Okay. Great. Do you have any special spots that you were thinking you might like to take a look at? Um, I really, so I haven't narrowed it down yet, but I really want to look at, um, you know, like there are like islands and stuff or like not islands. Um, they're like countries and they're like on water, like in Bora Bora, but I want to look somewhere else. Um, wherever the car, you know, I'm sorry, it sounds really bad. Where the Kardashians were, you know where the Kardashians were? I have to, I have to figure out what it's called, but like hmm. they were above, like all the houses and stuff are like on stilts and they're like above water. So I want to know if, like it looked like Maldives. You know, years ago. Mal yeah, yep, the Maldives, yep. The Maldives, yeah. I really want to look at it like how it was, you know, before, like obviously modern day, so. I know what didn't just appear, so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, but also also maybe, maybe a little bit challenging to see, see really big changes because also the level of, of uh, uh, this uh, terrestrial area underwater it depends very much on the wind and, and storms and all other all stuff like that. So it is it's also not not like a uh, permanent line, a permanent shoreline. It is it is changing all the time. Actually, for example, tidal movement of water uh, will yeah will change with this shoreline. Twice, twice a day, practically. Now. So, right. so yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like the water, and then like water levels and stuff. But I know I do want to do something like coastal. So either that, or I might look in like Haiti, Haiti and um, the Dominican Republic, their island. Which one? Haiti. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. So I want if if the first one doesn't work out, I'm definitely gonna look into Haiti. Yeah, I'm looking at the Maldives. Like that's uh, that's some pretty small landmass there out in the middle of the ocean. 
I know it's so small. People always, yeah, I always look at them like, wow, they are like super, super teeny. Yeah. Would you show it, Sam? Yeah, sure. Oh, you need to enable it for me. Oh, sorry. Uh, go on. All right, are you seeing it? Uh huh. Where is it? Hello. So, oh, look at this oh, little hole in the in the middle of North Sri Lanka. Yes, in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah look at way out there. <laughs> Tiny. Yes, it is tiny. Yeah. Interesting, though. Yes, this is. But this, this is this is a really nice place. Nice place, I believe, in the middle of Indian Ocean. Right. Yeah, well, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, sometimes uh, famous people from all over the world go there, right? So it's kind of fun to take a look at, at what they've got going. Um, I own, go ahead. I have only once flew, flew over Maldives <laughs> and it was like a changing plane where... <laughs> Oh yeah, you so you stopped. Uh, do you, you, they landed you there and you switched planes? Yeah, just just for for a couple of for a couple of hours. Yeah, <laughs> it was like they they have in the airport they have like uh, at the entry they have like welcome to paradise poster. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't get to stop. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, very cool. So, um, yeah, it sounds like we've got, everybody's got some places that they've picked out. Um, three of you who are on a team today showed up all at once. So Ismail, Daria, and Daniel, you should, you should figure out how to communicate and get your, get your images. Um, we'd love to see that return to us. Uh, Jaden and Mikhail, do, should we just have you guys can start? Why don't you just do that, and then we'll add, um, we'll add. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name right now. Um, we'll add your other partner in. So yeah. let's. Yeah, if Mikhail tried to contact Sonora, and and Jaden tried to contact Mark, but yeah, Mark, thank you. Um, yeah, if we can have Mikhail and Jaden, we can have you two partner. And then if, um, if Sonora and Mark join, they can actually just join the same team with you. So maybe reach out to that, that whole group and just see if we can get people meeting. Cause we really only need you to coordinate and meet. So part of our project, remember, is part of it's satellite stuff and part of it is teaching you how to uh connect with with your foreign partners and do a little bit of work so we'd like you just to hang out for a little while pick a spot share a few minutes and some information and then get it back to us with your images so, so the, the yeah go ahead go on. yeah well that so the, <laughs> <laughs> so there's some, there's some delay so yeah. go on I love I love video meetings. Um, the other thing we want you to do, <clears throat> so if you filled out that survey, we're going to send you another survey. We need those back from people. Um, we aren't making them very long. They're not hard to fill out. So please go ahead and get those filled out for us. Um, and in case in case survey isn't the right word, questionnaire or survey, the the 
that we send out, we kind of want you to do a short one after each meeting or before and after really, right, Dimitri, isn't that? Yeah, so yeah. Well, what I, what I uh, suggest maybe for, for the next week is just also to have a, not only just discussion, but also I could give some small lecture about another important source of information this uh, NASA World View portal. I, I do recommend you to study it a little bit by yourself, but maybe next week I could tell like half an hour, half an hour uh, about possibilities which provides this World View. You could also find images here, also could download and open them in, uh, in Google Earth Pro. By the way, there's no way to draw uh, your area here, but you could find your location by geographic coordinates uh, or by name. And you could also find an image and, and download. And uh, what's important that here, it is the portal uh, supported by NASA, uh, American Space Agency. Uh, so, and it's, it's very important, but here it is also, you could see some demonstrations I, I would suggest you to to study by particular to my particular theme particular topic like for example uh, fire monitoring or, uh, or watching clouds or for example dust storms or huracan monitoring so they just suggest you some a kind of uh, excursions for through satellite images, and you will see where, what you could see with satellite images. I, I do recommend you also, by the way, some, some yes, for example, this uh, uh, Pine Island glacier in Antarctic, uh, just the se separation, one of uh, um, uh, iceberg from Antarctic glacier. Also, you could, it is like a, like a little bit excursion in time looking at the satellite team, just how it is moving. So you could also find your own, uh, for your own project, some something like that. So this is a good collection of examples, I would say. And also as you uh, add layers, add some data, you could also, they are also sorted by uh, various topics like fire or dwarfs or dust, air quality, or something like the flooding. So you could see many other stuff here. I, I will right. tell a little bit later about that. But I, I do recommend also this. You could also see some, of course, very low, very coarse resolution images, but you could see them virtually for, for every day. You could see changes going on like day by day and see, see how, for example, some uh, snow melting is going on or some fires, forest fires are developing or some other with large scale. Uh, and changes. how far back do they go? Yeah, how far back? Uh, for here, uh, depends on the satellites, but basically to the year 2000. So it is not very deep. If you would like to go deeper, then welcome back to Sentinel Hub and <laughs> Yeah, and, and use this uh, Landsat 5 and, and earlier Landsat series data. Landsat 5 is, is uh, a little bit finer resolution and uh, this previous data is even coarser, but then you could go even more back in space. So, so you can see, everybody, you can see how when Dima is showing you um, these various platforms, like there's a lot of similarity in how they function so that um, there's more than one place that you can go to get the information that you need if you're working on a project, maybe for school or for a job later on in life, where you want to show information over time with satellite imagery. There's all sorts of different portals, but um, He's showing you kind of the strengths of of like this NASA worldview has certain strengths and um, 
Sentinel Hub has certain strengths, but ultimately there's a lot of similarity in how they function. So you should be getting more and more comfortable with popping into one or another just to find certain sets of data that you want. I got a question. So for this project, do you guys have like any suggestions of what to use? I know you said it's like free choice, but I was just wondering if you want us to try something in particular. I think I think you need to start with Sentinel Hub because that's the one you've got the most information on right now. And then um, as we get a little further along, you might then pop into um, like the NASA worldview spot and or even Google Earth Pro and get different information. But start with Sentinel Hub and then we'll we'll keep looking at other newer stuff. It's a little bit depends on uh, what what you would like to see in your project. So if you will write to us your ideas, we could some suggest you what is better point to start with. For example, if you are looking for some changes uh, in urban area, but sometimes the highest resolution is needed. So you are welcome to Google Earth Pro, for example. If you if you need to go back in time for a long for a long while, like more than more than twenty years, when it is it is quite important to access uh, Landsat images, and you could actually you could both uh, to access it both through uh, Sentinel Hub and through uh, Worldview NASA Worldview also uh, grants you access to um, to Landsat images, but probably not for so long time ago. There are also some, some other information sources, but at least with two, you could leave this free if, if it becomes also Google is Pro, you could start with, start yeah. anyone, and when, when you will see what is missing. Right. Yeah, and what, I, what I'm trying to make you understand is that I don't want you to get overwhelmed with how many sources there are. There's there's satellites and there's the images they send back. And then all of these, all of these different sources of accessing those, they buy the images and put them in there for you to use. So that's why there's so many different places. Um, so I don't want you to get overly confused with, we're not trying to teach you how to be an expert in accessing 15 different sources of information out in the world. We just want you to understand that there are a lot of them and that each one has access to certain sets of data and that you can go in and get stuff if you need. And many of them are free. Is that right, Dimitri? Yeah, that, that's, that's right. And yeah. as you as you will learn how to deal with two or three of them, you will easily find out how to deal with others. So all of them are about the same. You find a place, you find where uh, select the information, choose the information source, and select time, and and just just look or download into there. All right. Well, before we before we end for the day, does anyone else have any questions? No. I mean, it's Sunday, Sunday morning, and it's Sunday evening for most of you. So, um, yeah. If, if anyone's got a question, go ahead and. Let us know. Otherwise, we will um, follow up. Maybe later today, probably Monday, we'll follow up and and maybe reconfigure those teams so that you have an actual partner. Um, and then we'll we'll let you get into your groups and see if you can't send us a few images. Okay. By the way, uh, the the organizational question. Um, what what is basically better for for you attending today what is better for you sunday or saturday to have lectures mm -hmm. or online meetings i like sunday sunday is better i also what about like sunday that? mornings i think that's good i agree sunday, morning. sunday is good day <laughs> okay michael daria sunday or saturday is better for you sunday is okay Sunday is okay. I think Sunday. Okay. Everybody voice for Sunday now. Okay. Yeah. Well. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds good. Well, why don't you um, maybe in your teams, 
why don't you try and find a time right around this time then on Sundays, because it seems like it works for all of you, um, where you can get together for a little while and, and you know, I, I hope you guys are all comfortable with that, right? You don't need us there to do a, a meeting. No, but probably, so next Sunday we're not meeting as a group? Well, yes. I'll let you know. Yeah, probably yeah. we will. Probably we will, but, but I'm but, but, maybe... but just also do not hesitate to contact us any other day before meeting. If you have questions or if you have something to show us, just send it either via email or via WhatsApp. Or if you if you would suggest any other way to communicate, we are also open for it. And maybe we can try something new next Sunday. Maybe we can do uh, 30 minutes with you and your team and 30 minutes with the old guys, with the lecture people. Uh, and, and so that you have a structured time where you can meet. I, I, you know, I know you can meet in breakout rooms and stuff like that. I don't know if you have that. Yeah. Yeah. It is here. Yeah, so maybe instead of us talking for the whole time, maybe Dimitri can show us um, a lecture on uh, on the NASA worldview. And then, because that's kind of cool, and I'd like to know, know more about that. And then maybe you can spend time in the rooms just with yourselves uh, working through your project. Would that be good? Preferably both. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think if we help structure that meeting time, that would be that would be better, um, and maybe we'll just make it during this this time. So we'll plan on we'll plan on probably seeing you again next Sunday then. Um, and in the meantime, if you can at least send a few WhatsApp and or and or emails back and forth and try and work out um, a shared area and get a couple of images to bring to the meeting on Sunday, that would be great. Okay. okay. I sent an email to my group, so if Daniel and Dario can look at it, that'll be great. Great. Okay. Yep. So you can, you know, if you can't, if you can't get a video meeting going before next Sunday, we'll have time for you to do that next Sunday. But in the meantime, we want you to pick an area together, find a couple of images, and get that ready so you can talk about it next Sunday. All right. Well, thanks everyone for attending. Okay, thank you. If you don't thank have you. any more questions right now, then we are going to finish. All right. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.